Hello, this is Julian with Coffer Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Grano Intero Wash Process Peru from Puku Puku. And there's the bag right there. And Puku Puku, based out of Lima, Peru. And this is actually a very unique review, as it's our first time reviewing any coffee roaster from South America. And I want to give a major shout out to my good friend Alicia for bringing me this coffee back from Peru while she was down there for a wedding. Now, Alicia does not drink coffee herself, so I did give her four tips when picking out a coffee for me. The first of which being that I wanted something as light as possible. The second being a single origin coffee. The third being something that offered fruity or floral notes. And then last of which, and possibly most important, that the coffee is whole bean. So I do think Alicia did an amazing job of bringing me back a coffee that I can review. And I do think it'll make for an interesting review as this right here is day 44. And recipe we went with for this coffee was a 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 93 degrees Celsius, about 199 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind. Roast profile for this one, so interestingly enough, they do have it listed on here that this is a medium roast by their standards. And I do have to say that I've actually had some coffees from some notable and prominent American roasters that did feel a little bit more developed than this one right here. So I would say that this is pushing the medium in terms of that roast profile, but even then it's not necessarily a true overly developed medium, but rather maybe even on the lighter side of that medium by most standards and metrics. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 30, first impression, and we opted for the V60, and that's the first takeaway I had from this coffee, was that it was surprisingly lighter than expected going into it, with a much more balanced cup with an abundance of South American characteristics at the forefront. That, of course, being the caramelized aspect to it with a milk chocolate base. So overall, it left a very positive first impression. I think the main reason that I was expecting something on the more developed side of things was, one, because I well didn't really know what to expect and then the second being that they do have this listed as a medium so i was definitely expecting this to have a fair bit of roasty qualities to it so having this cup be a little bit more balanced and slightly lighter profiled than that expectation was definitely a positive start day 31 opted for the chemex and there were a lot of similar results as the first try as it offered a traditionally american south american forward cup with plenty of the caramelized aspects being at the forefront, complemented well by a slight dark chocolate and fruit brightness. So that was another interesting part of this coffee. Alicia did pick this one out because she knows how much I love the peach aspects within coffee. And that's one of the notes that they did have listed on here. And to my surprise, there was a fair bit more of a fruit brightness than I might've expected. So this has been pretty solid so far. Some much better than expected results from these first two tries. Day 32 opted for the April Brewer and this finally yielded a slight bit more of the smoky qualities as it offered a lot more of the dark chocolate aspect and a slight tobacco like quality. So that of course is going to insinuate some smoky components to it. Still a fair bit of the fruit brightness though, a little bit more citrus and the cup in general felt just slightly less even as there was a slight coffee bitterness to the finish as well. So just an okay day, hasn't necessarily been as good as the first couple of tries. Day 34 attempted to kind of reduce some of those qualities by lowering the temperature back through the V60 and this is the best it's been to this point and it's one of the main reasons I did settle on this recipe specifically as the smoky qualities of the cup are significantly toned down allowing for a lot more of the caramelized sweetness to be present at the forefront of the cup with a wonderful fruit brightness that's also present in terms of the peachy aspect but also with plenty of other fruit aspects and a classic South American quality yet again. So in those regards, definitely a lot more positives with the adjustments we've made. We continue on to day 36 with the Chemex. Same adjustments, not quite as good. And I decided to stick with the V60 going forward as this was a little bit more skewing on the smoky side of things with a bit of that fruit brightness still at the forefront, but it quickly dissipated. And that was one of the issues I had with the Chemex for this coffee specifically, even at the lower temperatures. The fruit brightness is present, but it just was so quick to dissipate. It didn't necessarily have an overly long lasting finish. It offered plenty of the heavier chocolate aspects, a fair bit of nuttiness, but in general, overall, not quite as good as through the V60. 
the A38 another try through the V60 and the coffee in general might have tapered off and that's one of the reason why one of the reasons why these days have been so closely numbered together one it's because I needed to get through this coffee before Japan but the second thing that this coffee did feel like it was already on the verge of being past its life cycle and it started to really present itself within the cup itself as it's offering a lot more of those kind of robust smoky qualities with the classic Central American attributes, well, South American attributes present within the cup, including that dark chocolate and nutty aspects with plenty of those smoky qualities and significantly less fruit. So the fruit vibrancy is toned down and a lot of those, what people would describe as coffee characteristics are much more present. So haven't necessarily enjoyed the last couple of days. We continue on to day 40 with another try through the V60. And it definitely feels like the coffee is a little bit past its best as plenty of the robust characteristics are at the forefront, but the more fruit-based characteristics have since dissipated and are much more on the back end. Smokier dark chocolate, robust nuttiness yet again, not necessarily ideal. So day 42 and interestingly day 44 over here have somewhat turned back the clock as I have experienced some of the earlier experiences from this coffee with a slightly more robust caramelized aspect in a well-defined manner. So it's entirely possible that this coffee might have been a little finicky to brew with. In addition to that, this coffee is obviously not overly well suited for my very soft water for this. And as a result, I don't necessarily think that that was an ideal combination it was a little bit more light with a more mild chocolate base and plenty of that earlier PG fruit brightness at the forefront. Nice, yet again, this coffee definitely did have some nice attributes to it and that was demonstrated on several of these days. But let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. We have two level fours, so let's go through those real quick. And we'll start with the finish at a level four. Yes, so that in itself was created on one of these days where it wasn't necessarily at its very best, but even with that, it didn't necessarily have an overly long lasting, too heavy, too overbearing aspect to it in any regard, even if it did have some more of those classic kind of developed coffee characteristics to it. It didn't necessarily reach anything higher than that level four. I feel like that's a pretty nice fit for it. Though my biggest grievance, as I've kind of mentioned, is that the fruit qualities at times can dissipate a little quickly, so may not necessarily have the most lingering or long lasting finish to the cup. Then we have uh, the chocolate at a level four. Yes, a lot of South American characteristics in this one that was present right from the onset. And I think a lot of the varieties that they use on here are going to kind of blend themselves towards that in the first place. So having the chocolate there at a level four is no surprise. Roast profile of this one is obviously going to play a little bit of a role in that as well. I mean, these are all going to be proving coffees. So yes, all of those factors together are going to lend itself towards it being a little bit more of a chocolate forward cup. Then we have a bunch of level threes. We'll start with the sweetness level three. Yes, and at its best, I would say that there was a wonderful caramelized sweet aspect to this one, and even the chocolate aspect to it was also quite sweet. So if I was being overly generous, a level four could actually fit for this one, but I feel like given the struggles and inconsistencies with this cup, most of the time it was skewing a little further towards down that level three mark. So level three seems to fit. Acidity, level three. Yes, there was a little bit of that brightness and at times I think on maybe some of the earlier days and even towards the end I could have experienced a slight bit more of the brightness, but it's a little bit more on the lower side of the level three. I think the rose profile once again is going to play a little bit of a role in the overall brightness that I'm experiencing from this coffee. Spice, level three, yes, and some of those uh, South American spice-like qualities to this one as well. So it did have a little bit of that kind of spiced chocolate base to it. Saltiness, level three, there's another equality to it. I was fully expecting that to score at that mark right there, so that seems to be in line with it. Stone fruit, level three, yes. And the peachy quality that I've been discussing, it was the most pronounced fruit quality, even more so than the slight citrus, the undefined citrus I was able to experience. So that peachy fruit brightness, very nice in this coffee, definitely my favorite part of it when I was able to get that in a more pronounced manner. Caramel level three, that was my second favorite part when I was able to experience a very well-defined and sweeter caramelized attribute than this coffee was at its best for me. And on the day 42 mark, and even now I feel like I could probably push that up to a level four, but I think that since this coffee oh, most of the time was a little closer to that level three, that's the best fit I have for it. Smokiness, level three, yes. And again, that's going to go back to the roast profile of this one, but I feel like maybe if I would have had this coffee probably day seven through day 23, day 24, 
then that might have been toned down a little bit more. The sweetness might have been a little higher, the caramel might have been a little higher, and even the stone fruit could have possibly had a little bit more brightness to it. But milky quality, yes, and even when I was experiencing some of that kind of tobacco-like aspect to it, not ideal. Bitterness, level three, that's coffee bitterness. So yes, that's going to be the roast profile at play one more time. Don't have too much to add to that. Savoriness, level three, yes. And there's just a little bit more robust of those characteristics to it. Specifically, again, I'm thinking of the nutty quality to it, which does come out in a little bit more savory of a manner. Body, level three. I think that's maybe the one thing I'm kind of surprised by. I probably had anticipated the body to have a slight bit more texture to it, even with the adjustments we've made and even with this coffee being what it is most of the time. Level three feels a little low, but that's where this coffee placed. It was a little bit more medium bodied than maybe some more full bodied or heavier bodied coffee I might've expected. Then last thing we're discussing is the cleanliness level three. That one may be a little disappointing as on the earlier days, I feel like a level four was always going to be generous, maybe lower side of level four, but that smoky quality is always going to take away and prevent any coffee from scoring there at that level four for me. So nice clarity, especially relative to some of my expectations, but even then the level three seems to be the best fit for it due to the smokiness. But as I am looking at this tasting wheel, I do think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I do think that this was a very fun one because I do think it's wonderful to review coffees from coffee roasters that you might not otherwise be able to get your hands on. I'm not entirely sure if they do ship outside of Peru, but for me, I think this was a really cool experience. And it goes to show that coffee roasters in other parts of the world, they still do a very nice job of things that they release. As this right here, it's way better than I expected. I've had so many worse coffees in my life than something like this. I can go to a number of local coffee roasters where I would find this to be significantly superior to those. So I think it's not necessarily comparing this alongside of some of the really heavy hitters that we review on this channel, or rather comparing it alongside of maybe some of the average coffees that we do drink, some of the more average coffee roasters around the area that we live by, and even something like Starbucks. Like This is way better than anything I've had from Starbucks in my entire life. It's way better than a lot of the other kind of big name brand coffee roasters that are out there, especially the ones that may offer a little bit more developed of a quality to them. So that's credits to them. I think that this coffee was quite nice. At times it was a little tricky. It's never going to be my sort of profile having a little bit more of a developed quality to it, but there were some really wonderful traits I pulled out from it. The sweetness, the caramel, as well as the fruit brightness. At times when those were at their peak, it was a really nice coffee and offered a lot of attributes that I typically tend just to go for in coffee in general. So. Thanks to Alicia one more time for this coffee. I think she did a nice job of picking this one out. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to. You do need to start with the profile, of course, given that this one has a little bit more development to it. If that's the type of coffee that you tend to prefer to start with, then this will be a base for that. And then after that, you are going to be focusing most specifically on the caramelized aspect to it, as well as the chocolate aspect, as it does offer a lot of South American characteristics. And in addition to that, it does have a nice fruit brightness that can kind of contrast to those things, giving it a little bit more depth in general. There's going to be a little bit of smokiness. There's going to be a little bit of body, not necessarily the most clean coffee, but in general, it's going to offer you that more classic South American profile that you can expect from a Peruvian coffee. But for the most part, I think that's the best way I can leave this review. If you by chance, by any chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Grano Entero Wash Processed Peru from Puku Puku. Thank you for watching.